Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Before we get started, please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. This video is all about tubic losses. In this video, we will discuss about the introduction, etiology, spread infection, predisposing factor, types, primary TB, secondary TB, investigation of TB, and extra pulmonary TB. Let's start with the introduction of TB. TB is a communicable chronic disease caused by mycobacterium TB. It usually involves the lungs but may affect any organ or tissue of the body. Etiology There are three types of mycobacteria which are responsible for disease. That are Mycobacterium TB, Mycobacterium bovis, and atypical Mycobacteria. First of all, we discuss Mycobacterium TB, the causes of most of infection in humans. Next, Mycobacterium bovis, endemic in cattle but now rarely responsible for disease in human beings, except who use unpasteurized milk. Atypical mycobacteria affecting immunocompromised persons such as with AIDS. Spread of infection. It spread through direct droplet spread, indirect spread or through ingested milk. Indirect droplet spread it means from person to person by inhalation of airborne brucelli that have been coughed or sneezed into the atmosphere. Indirect spread through dishes, clothing and other articles of daily use laden with brucelli through ingested milk. Ingestion of contaminated milk causes infection of bovis types of brucelli. Predisposing factors involve environmental factors and pathological factors. Environmental factors which lower the body resistance such as malnutrition, poverty, overcrowding, unhygienic condition, alcoholism and heavy smoking. Pathological factors which lower the body resistance for example diabetes mellitus, steroids, chronic lung disease, lymphoma, and cytotoxic drug. There are two types of TB. Primary TB, secondary TB, or also known as post-primary TB. Primary TB develops in a previously unexposed, non-sensitized individual, usually in children. Primary TB infection usually occur in the lung but also occur in tonsils or ileocecal region. Clinical features In majority of patients, primary TB is asymptomatic. It only diagnosed by chest x-ray and tuberculin test. Mild fever lasts for 7 to 14 days. Dry cough but mild. Arrhythmia nodosum Bluish red rays, tender cutaneous lesion on the shin and less commonly on the thighs may occur. Fate of primary TB Healing and calcification In most people, the primary infection and the associated lymph node lesion heal and calcify. Progressive pulmonary TB in children with impaired immunity, such as those with malnutrition, the primary infection does not heal. Enlarged lymph nodes may compress bronchi, cause obstruction. Progressive pulmonary TB may appear either during the course of the initial illness or after a latent interval of weeks or months. Management and tuberculosis therapy. 
investigation in primary TB through chest X-ray, tuberculin test, and bacteriological examination. Chest X-ray in children unilateral hilar lymph node enlargement. The intrapulmonary lesion may or may not be seen in adolescent and young adult. Lymph node enlargement. Less conspicuous but pulmonary lesion more prominent. Tuberculin test extremely valuable in children. A positive test in a children who has not previously been vaccinated with BCG. Bacteriological examination. Three laryngeal swab should be examined. Isolation of tubercle bacilli provide absolute proof. Of diagnosis. Secondary TB or post primary TB. This type of TB developed in previously sensitized host, resulting from reinfection or most commonly reactivation of primary infection. It may occur shortly after primary TB, but mostly it develops after the initial infection. It is almost always localized. One or both upper lobes are involved. In addition, the superior segment of lower lobe are frequently involved. In these locations, there is a high oxygen concentration that favor mycobacterial growth. In clinical feature, firstly we discuss systematic symptoms. Low grade fever usually in the evening, night sweat, weight loss, anorexia, malaise and weakness. Next we discuss local symptoms. It is related to pulmonary system. An early symptom of secondary TB is cough. Initially, it is dry and later protective with sputum. Sputum usually mucoid, hemopathesis. Blood streaks are present in sputum. Dull chest pain occur in secondary TB. The late symptom of secondary TB involves dyspnea. It may be due to fibrosis, pleural effusion or spontaneous pneumothorax. On examination, physical signs depend on stage and extent of disease. In initial stages, signs are usually none. It is diagnosed by radiological findings. Patient may have repetition in the involved area during inspiration. Fever and wasting may be present. In some patients, Paler due to anemia and finger clubbing develop. Following signs may be present in secondary TB. Decreased movement over affected part of the chest, impaired percussion knot and bronchial breath sounds are present in sign of consolidation. In signs of cavitation, Bronchial breath sound and crepitation are present. Signs of fibrosis involve affected side of the chest flattened, apex beat displays to the side of lesion. Chest expansion is required, percussion not impaired. In signs of pleural effusion, movement of the chest reduced. Percussion knot is tony dull. Breath sound diminished or absent. Clinical features. Chronic cough with hemopathesis. Weight loss. Pyrexia of unknown origin. Unresolved pneumonia. Exudative pleural effusion. Pneumothorax. Investigation of TB. Through chest X-ray, tuberculin test, pleural fluid aspiration, polymerase chain reaction, and needle biopsies. In chest X-rays, ill-defined opacity present in early stage. 
it is usually situated in one of the upper lobes. In advanced cases, opacities are larger and more widespread and may be bilateral. Trachea and heart shadow are displaced toward the side of lesion in marked fibrosis. If pleural effusion is present, a dense uniform opacity in the lower and lateral part of the hemithorax is present. Next, tuberculin test. The tuberculin test is positive in individuals who have been infected sometime with mycobacterium TB. Pleural fluid aspiration. In TB, pleural fluid is exudated with predominant lymphocytes. Pleural fluid culture for mycobacterium TB is positive in less than 25% of cases. Polymerase chain reaction. PCR permit rapid detection of mycobacterial DNA in sputum and other fluid within 48 hours. Needle biopsy. Biopsy of pleura, lymph node and solid lesion within the lung may reveal granuloma. Extra pulmonary TB include pleural TB, TB of upper airways, lymph node TB, TB pericarditis, gastrointestinal TB, genitourinary TB, bones and joints TB, and TB meningitis. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.